Today we are going to go to API ICP individual certification program website and uh, cover all you need to know about API SIF certification. Source Inspector Fixed Equipment. So if you go to Google or any other search engine and type in API ICP, uh, very first one it would be the API website and individual certification program. And if you click on certification, there is a drop down window and you can select the program. And then you go to API Site, Source Inspector Fixed Equipment, and that will you off. Uh, this exam you can give it in person or by remote proctoring. That means from the comfort of your home and office. If you want to know more, you can click on these icons and it takes you there. Once you apply, which you have to click this is step two, and uh, you re register with API and create a free account, and uh, you upload your qualifications, your experience. You put it down there, provide two references and pay the fees. And then at the same time, you have to select the three weeks exam window that we shall discuss later. So once you select that three weeks exam window, that is frozen for you. If you, you cannot change it. I mean, changing it is as good as failing the exam. That means you have to reschedule, pay the rescheduling fee. And uh, same way that you fail and you have to reschedule your exam. This certification is valid for three years. And API says that uh, this, uh, the source inspector is actually the prime thing they are doing, supplier quality surveillance. So this can be a potential exam question. Who perform the important task of supplier quality surveillance. Uh, they are responsible for examining fabricated and manufactured equipment of materials and suppliers and its facility, confirming that the supplier's quality management system is being utilized effectively. So based on these two tasks, the overall response they have the eyes and ears of the purchaser or end user or uh, client so by examining fabricated manufactured equipment and also checking that the supplier is working according to a quality management system they claim to be doing uh, so the supplier quality surveillance uh, that can be done uh, it is focused primarily on pressure containing equipment and structural equipment such as vessels, columns, towers, seat exchanger, piping, valves, pressure lifts, or anything which is not rotating equipment like pumps, compressors, and turbines, it falls under the domain of source inspector fixed equipment. So as you can see, there is a lot of scope here. Now, you have got a publication effectivity sheet, uh, that is valid till November 2022 and every year this publication effectively sheet changes. Uh, this is comprised of a list of the materials, you have, the study material that you have to study, uh, codes, references, recommended practices that will go through this. And uh, the reason is that uh, this is based on uh, a typical job description that API identifies for a source inspector and based on that uh, job description they would outline what an inspector need to know and based on that uh, they would uh, have the exam and uh, set out the publication effective sheet of what documents could be applicable. As you can see here uh, this publication effective sheet has got the revision number, so make sure that you are studying the right revision. Uh, anything that is changed from the previous publication effective sheet will be highlighted in red. So you have to study uh, API recommended practice 588, uh, inspection of pressure result 572, 577, 578, 598 for valve inspection, and uh, AWS D11, Structural Building Code, and ASNTTC1A, NTT Personal Qualification. And then from ASME, you should study Section 2 for materials, Part A, B, C, D, 
section SA2370 and SA6. As with section 5, non destructive examinations, and you have to study all the definition plus articles 1, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10, which are general requirements. PTMT, leak test, and visual test. Uh, as in section 8, uh, pressure vessel construction code, and you, have to, you should know about these clauses, these sections, UG4, up to, and then UW. Uh, UG stands for general requirement, and W is for building requirements. And UCS is carbon steel. So that's how construction code is uh, categorized. As with section 8, welding qualification, so you have to know about only the welding only, so QW, uh, this closes, we have highlighted them in our ex training course, B31.3, chapters 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and B16.5, all the chapters from 1 to 8, uh, SSPC, uh, this is the Society for Protective Cleaning, and uh, you should know about the, the various uh, uh, cleaning categories like solvent cleaning, power tool cleaning, and etc. So this would be the application effect sheet of material that you have to study. And the most important out of this would be guide for source inspection uh, and quality surveillance of fixed equipment and uh, this is free for all and you can download it we have already downloaded it in our course and highlighted it and uh, it practically says the a to z of uh, talks about a to z of uh, source inspection on quality surveillance starting with scope definitions uh, management program uh, 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 source inspection planning activities uh, inspection performance and then it goes to on, on and on to examination method tools and equipment as you can see it covers everything here and final acceptance and then the metallurgy issues and then pressure vessels piping has got some annexes this is free and almost 50 percent of questions come from here so make sure you do study this thoroughly Let's uh, it's a three hours, fifteen minutes long, hundred ten question, hundred hour scored, and ten hour pretest are not scored. The reason for pretest uh, are that uh, from time to time API design new question and add to the question data bank. Uh, it's uh, designed by one subject matter expert and. Uh, checked by three other subject matter experts and the reason is that they want to know whether the question is clear enough and whether the question is something is relevant to tasks and uh, duties of a source inspector fixed equipment and then this is included in question data bank as non scored and it comes in the exam and again tested to see that uh, how difficult or how easy was it compared to number of participants who answered it correctly and whether it has been challenged by uh, the candidates or not. And then it turns into a score type of question. Uh, is score, non-score, they are shuffled together, they are not marked, so you have to answer all of them, so that all 110 question. There is an exam tutorial here, that before the exam starts, you will, uh, will ask you to go through it, so you have to uh, tick the non-disclosure agreement and confirm that you are not divulging any material uh, sharing it with others any exam question and uh, there are very useful uh, information here you can use the next button you can uh, you can see the uh, the question you're attempting here question number three and you can jump from one question to another you should see your name here, the, your time remaining would be here, and your progress would be here, the top. Um, 
and uh, if you flag off the question it will uh, change color and if there is a long question it says page record is scrolling so you have to go down in order to select the right answer time remaining we talk about this and there is a flag off you, if you flag it it turn change color so you uh, any question you are in doubt you can flag it off and then uh, go to flag off question and see and uh, once again uh, if you click on a chosen answer it turns color so it shows you that you have chosen this answer you can uh, then click again and and choose and then click the another answer if you wish to so it's always possible to change your answer until your time is up it's a calculator i don't think you would need this but uh, there's an icon here on calculator and this is how the calculator looks like so you can do some simple calculations you can hold the mouse on a board and drag it and then that, that's highlighted it if you want to zoom in also if uh, you are in doubt but you know that like say two answers are definitely wrong and so you are in doubt of uh, choosing uh, between the two other answers possible answer you can always right click on these answers and then that is strike them off so you can zoom in on the remaining uh, chosen answers to choose from at the end you can uh, filter a uh, review all button or filter it by a flagged off question or an attempted question or attempted question and look at all of them as you can see there is a flag off button here so this shows it has not attempted uh, whereas these green ones are all attempted answered this is not answered and it's flagged off so answer all the question because uh, there's no negative marking that increase your chances of passing there is a caption a comment sheet at the uh, there that you can if you want to challenge anything or you want to make some comment let me remember that this is coming off your time at the end uh, there is an end exam button it says uh finish exam and uh, and once you feel you you press that, uh, it asks you once again to confirm. And once you confirm it, you, uh, the exam finishes. Or whenever your time is up, the three hours fifteen minutes. Okay, let's see uh, if you the, what qualification you need. Uh, at the moment, they don't need any pre-qualification, uh, so they wouldn't need any. Uh, references to verify your uh, uh, sorry any your experience they don't need any experience uh, as a pre-call recertification is every three years and uh, you can apply for recertification 90 days before your expiry date and up to 90 days after that as a grace period subject to late application fee of 150 dollars uh, Let's go and see the schedule and fees. Say, if you click on schedule and fees on 2022, uh, there was one exam on July and August. The next exam would be on November 4 and 25, with the September 2, which is already passed, as a de application deadline. So, uh, once you select the three weeks window, the slot, um, you have to get a, your email authorization by this date, September 2. So the next exam would be, uh, you can select the windows for next year, say 2023. So the first available one would be March 10 to March 31. And the deadline would be January 6, 2023. But you can apply right now and select this slot. And the minute you get the email authorization, uh, select this slot with the Prometric Test Center because they work on first come for serve basis and up to a month before the exam you can change the timing or the location free of charge and between 5 to 29 days before the exam window uh, you can change it for a fee of $70 with Prometric and Prometric is subcontracted by API to uh, do the exam the computer based exam yeah. so the next one would be here July 14 to August 4 
with a deadline of May 12. And uh, so it's done three times a year. And the third one or last one on the year 2023 will be again November 3 to 24. So there is some very useful information here for remote testing where you can, uh, at the time of your application, you can apply for remote testing. That means you can do it from the comfort of your home or office. Uh, but then the same rules apply. Uh, you have to uh, do an ID verification. Go and shoot photo ID and should be valid. Uh, the invigilator will be watching you through the exam through the uh, camera on your laptop or desktop and it should be on. Um, you have to turn around the desktop or laptop to show that there is nothing on your table. Nobody allowed to enter the room. You're not allowed to leave the room without the invigilator's permission. And if you leave the room and you get permission and you leave the room and you come back, you do the same ID check. So everything is same, except they wouldn't uh, provide you with uh, pen and paper and a pocket calculator as they do in the Prometric Test Center. And you cannot use your own. You should only use the calculator on the screen. So there's a lot of good information here. You can click on them and there is frequently asked question. There is exam and scoring. How is it done? The apply section where you click and you go to the apply uh, uh, for the to sit for the exam and you choose the the exam that you want to sit. Okay, um, reschedule, retest, recertify, etc. Frequently asked question. The icon is here, and uh, and if you want to find the inspector, it's here. Well, um, and there is a lot of important uh, and useful information here. Thank you.